with its whimsical storytelling, dance, puppetry, aerial dance, fire performance, and stage combat, Victorian horror troupe Phantasmagoria has been wowing audiences since 2010. I'm honored to meet with Lord Byron and Lady Sumerian, who will share a bit of what it's like to be part of their group. Tell us about yourselves and the troupe. Huh? Ah, well, that's a big question, but um, we've been around. We're, go we're about to enter into our 14th season uh, here in Florida. We are Central Florida based. Uh, we perform in Orange County, Seminole County, m many different counties all around the area. And we are a Victorian horror troupe, uh, which means that we base ourselves in sort of that Victorian and steampunk aesthetic. And we tell horror stories. Um, so, for example, the show we just closed at the Dr. Phillips Center was Poe, Through the Tales Darkly. It was all Edgar Allan Poe tales. And as we get ready for Christmas, because... Halloween isn't when you used to tell ghost stories. It was right. Christmas. Mm -hmm. And so as we enter Christmas, we are coming back with our Christmas Carol and Canterville ghost. Yeah, and we've been around, like I said, for about 13 years. We, we do a fusion of dance, storytelling, puppetry, projections, aerial art, and fire performance, yes. um, which we're not going to do here in your no. office. I promise you, <laughs> no fire. Um, and that is kind of how we create our shows. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. And how did each of you get started? Well, it is Lord Byron's uh, baby, if you will. He created the troupe. He brought us all together. Um, I was brought on first year as one of the dancers, and I've been with the troupe every year since, so mm -hmm. going into my 14th season with them. Yes. It's a long time. Yes. <laughs> we know each other all too well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and what inspired the creation? Ooh. I've always wanted to have a horror circus. I love horror movies, you know, ever since I was a child. And so I always wanted to have this idea of a horror circus. And I had these ideas and they didn't work. And I would have an idea and it didn't work. And I was um, in Atlanta, Georgia, actually. And I saw a Faulkner novel adapted to the stage by puppets and projections and music. And I went, oh, that's what we could do, something like that. So literally, I wrote the first show in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, and called all my friends in Florida and said, you want to be in a show? <laughs> and we all did the first one, and it went very well. Mm -hmm. So we all agreed we would do a second one. And now it is, like I said, 13 years 13. later. And we it started just as Halloween, you know, the inspiration. And now it's year round. We perform. Mm -hmm. We do Valentine's Day shows. We've done St. Patrick's Day shows. We do Christmas shows. Summer We've done solstice. summer solstice shows um, uh, and events and conventions and stuff. So it's a full time job for all of us now. Oh, that's yeah. <laughs> and that's up. Yes, that's excellent. What can someone experience when they're attending one of your shows? Well, see, you need to audition for us and be in the show, and then we'll show everyone. It's um. A mixture. It's a, yes, it also depends what show you're coming to see. Of course. So we call it a tapestry because mm -hmm. we kind of weave all these things together. So storytelling can be done with words. It can be done with acting. It can be done with dance. It can be done with fire, you know. So we integrate all of these things together and we don't, we never treat our puppets as puppets. We treat them as an actor on stage with us, you know, and some of them have been, you know, 14 feet tall. So we use large scale puppetry. Some have been small puppets. And that we always treat them as if they're real people working with us. The dance is a huge part of it. So Alina, who is our choreographer, she works as well with the Orlando Ballet. She's been with us the entire time. So she creates this elegant kind of you know, 18th century dance that we do. So it's weaving all of those things together, whether it's a story leading to a dance or the dance creating the story. Um, it's a, a lot of fun to watch those elements come together. Uh, and our projection designer, um, Dana, she creates the environment for us. Mm -hmm. So she creates worlds that we could never build on stage, but she creates them through the projections. Yeah. How has the vision of the show changed over time? Ooh, that's a that good question. Yes, and I leave that one to you. Oh. Well, it changes <laughs> based on the people. So for the first, simply put, yeah, yeah. So yes. the, the first two or three years, we never did fire. We just did the other stuff. And then someone came aboard who knew how to do fire dancing. So we all trained in fire. And then somebody will come aboard who knows a certain kind of puppet. We will create those kinds of puppets. Or we'll bring magic in. You know. So every year it differs based on the people who are involved. 
you know, we have a good core of people who have been there all 13 years, but then people keep adding in, some people move, that kind of a thing, you know. So I think it's based on the people involved. Um, it's based on trying new things. So we're in rehearsals for Christmas Carol, and this will be our fifth or sixth year. Yes. doing Christmas Carol oh. and we get bored easily so I rewrite it every year and <laughs> we restage it every year and then this year we're adding in Canterville Ghost to kind of up the ante you know so I think we tell the stories as much for ourselves as for the audience and when we want to see something new you know we create something new and get excited about it mm -hmm. um, or we look for strange opportunities we have done shows on trains uh where we have a two-foot aisle and that is our stage and we've done we just finished doing shows on cruise boats in tampa mm -hmm. um so it's give us a challenge and we will find a new way of doing it so that's how we kind of morph and grow hopefully by doing that where do you draw inspiration from when selecting themes Ooh. You know, whims, <laughs> like literally like, oh, let's let's do Poe this year or let's do vampires or let's do ghost stories. Um, uh, we look to the holidays a lot. So, you know, Valentine's Day offered us the inspiration of there's so many ghost stories about romance. You know? So that influenced that or the summer solstice is joy and celebration. So we look for stories that do that. So I think the stories themselves mm -hmm. and we also research a lot. Yeah. She researches music. Yes. Uh, for the dancers. Uh, Simmerine is one of our principal dancers with the troupe. So she researches music. I research the stories. So, for example, for next year's show, which is not happening till October, I started the research for the stories a week ago. Because yes. you have to spend all that time kind of searching it out. And then you go down rabbit holes. You know, you discover new stories that you never knew were going to exist. Um, my favorite story to tell about that is I was looking for illustrations in an old like very graphic medical journal from the 1800s where they were all sketches. And in there, I found reference to a poem. And I went, what is that? And I researched the poem and we performed the poem instead. Yeah. We never did anything with the illustrations. It was the yeah. poem. So it's the rabbit hole. So it's, you have to explore, reach out, and then we start to edit down to what we do. What do you feel is the key to good storytelling? Oh, you talk about it from a dance perspective. Oh, well, it's actually both on the dance perspective and as the actor core's perspective. Um, chemistry with the people you're on stage with. Mm. If you don't have the chemistry with the troop members around you, you're not all going to be able to come together and give the audience the gift of the stories or the gift of the dance. It's just individuals on the stage reading words. We all come together with the chemistry. We work together to weave the tapestry that the audience then travels with us on. Yeah, and it's it's the bare essence of storytelling. You know? yes. It's like no, storytelling, no frills. yeah, it goes no back frills. to the fire, right? Light a fire, here's the campfire, we're gonna tell a ghost story, right? And so it's, it's the spectacle of what we do, mm -hmm. but it's also very intimate. You know, we always tell our actors that you are telling the story to one person in the audience, you know? So we try to make it very personal. And then we also affect ourselves. Last night we were rehearsing and we have a new Marley this year, so a new actor who's been with us for quite a while who's playing the role of Marley. And he did something on stage, and also in the chorus all went, oh, because they reacted to it. So we're storytelling for ourselves as well. So if we can touch our own hearts, then we can touch the audience's hearts. So I think that is, that's the key to all storytelling, right? Going back centuries and centuries, you have to reach the person and affect them on an individual level and on the community level. And I think that's how it works best. And the dance yeah. just comes when yeah. words aren't enough anymore. When, when words aren't enough or a real human is enough, so a puppet is part of it, you know? That's what tells the story. Bravo, mm -hmm. bravo. Yes. You got more than you bargained for with that <laughs> answer, didn't you? <laughs> is there anything else that you'd like to share with our viewers? Oh, wow. Just that um, it's it's great to be rooted you know this is a community show mm -hmm, so definitely. thinking about it's being, being rooted into the community you know we always brag you know about you know we are central florida's you know victorian horror troupe like we have more <laughs> in florida but you know we always like to to brag that this is where we're from you know and even when we go to other communities because we have performed all over uh we have a troop in st louis we've had troops in georgia we're about to go up to new york and do shows um uh, we always make sure that people know that we are rooted here you know we're based in florida so we're kind of like 
horror ambassadors of course, <laughs> as we go. So that's wonderful. And then we just keep adding ideas, you know, and some people think we're this very kind of, you know, closed group. But in fact, we're huge. We have a hundred something members all over. And it's, 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 so it's very inclusive and we try to bring in people all over to do it. So I think that's what I like people to know is that we're not exclusive. We're very, you know, inclusive of everyone in the community. So. How can someone prepare to attend one of your shows? Oh. First they go shopping for their outfit. Yeah, <laughs> bravo. <laughs> go shopping for a really cool outfit and yeah. we will love that. <laughs> um, just come in with an open mind and come in uh, understanding that it's a storytelling show, mm -hmm. right? So you, you're actually going to be spoken to as well as watching things be created on stage. You know? When people come to see us for the first time, they're like, I thought I knew what you were going to be, but I had no idea. Right? So just come in with an open mind and see all of those things combined to each other. You know, sometimes we tell people, read the stories. You know, Quite recently, um, I was doing an, another interview and somebody said, so how could people celebrate a really good Christmas? And I said, light a candle and read a ghost story of Christmas, you know? And that's just a wonderful way of doing it at home for each other. Well, so that, that just reminds me, we do library shows for the kids yeah. as well. And after we've told the stories that we have, they then come up to us wanting to know where they can find yeah. that story in the yeah. library. Yeah. So for me, that's... Yeah, the that's, educational benefit of what we yeah, do, that introducing them. me so happy. You know, we're working with four new children in Christmas Carol, and I'm loving them, watching absorb all the stuff. They are that's just, that's There are tiny tins. Yeah. Uh, so that's just wonderful, watching them, you know, absorb all of that and open people to the idea of stories. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what we want them to come in with. Yeah. And how can people find out about where your shows are going to be? How can they attend? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, we plaster it all over so fast on Facebook. Um, and but, Instagram yeah, and Twitter. Yeah, and it's, yeah. so, so uh, we have a website, phantasmagoriaorlando.com. And we also have um, a, a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. So Facebook, Phantasmagoria Orlando. And we have uh, Instagram and Twitter, which is at Phantas Orlando. So a great way for people to reach out and see about the shows. And we have, you know, shows coming up at the Deepak just in mm -hmm, uh, a little yeah. too soon, yeah. uh, three weeks from now with our Christmas Carol and Canterville Ghost. And, but year round, they can find us on all the social media and the website, the best way. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for bringing this all oh, together. Yeah, bravo. <laughs> if you're enjoying this show, please subscribe to our channel and follow our Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter accounts.